Hello again everyone, this is Kevin Ring. Uh, today this is going to be a really quick video, but I'm going to show you how within Nova LCT to set up a redundant backup line within the same processor. So we know that the data ports do daisy chain on the LED wall. So that means two things. One, if the K one cable gets unplugged, we lose the wall. Two, if one of the jumper cables gets unplugged or damaged, uh, we lose everything on the other end of it. So what we're able to do then is if we have ports left over on our processor, we can utilize those ports as a redundant backup line. Uh, the process I'm going to show you is definitely the easiest way. There are a few other ways of doing this uh, in a more manual way. Some people will build a second screen and map it backwards, um, so on and so forth. But I'm going to show you the way through the sending card through what we call the redundancy table. So do remember that on Nova LCT, the software is broken down into three different tabs, the sending card, receiving card, and screen connection page. I have another video, which is the basic setup of Nova LCT. So if you want to know how to get to this point, uh, do check out that video. Uh, so at this point, I've already built my primary screen. I've built it as four wide, two tall, and it's on port one of sending card one. So at this point now, I'm going to go to my sending card tab. And here in the sending card tab, um, this is of course where I can set the, the EDID, the input connector. <clears throat> but down here at the bottom of the page, we have what's referred to as the redundancy table. Uh, the cool thing is you can ignore these two buttons up here, set as primary, set as backup. That's a different conversation. But down here, we have the redundancy table. So the way this works is pretty straightforward. You hit the add button, ADD, and now the redundancy settings open up. Uh, now, the text is very small, so you do have to hover your mouse over <coughs> to read what it all says. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. But what it does say is serial number of primary sending card serial number of backup sending card, serial number of primary port, serial number of backup port. So basically, what processor are we using? Right now we're doing what's called in-processor redundancy. So my primary and backup lines are coming off the same processor, thus one. Now this part's open to interpretation. Um, my primary port's one, and my backup can be port two, port three, port four, port nine, port 16, you get the idea. I'm going to do port um, two. Now I'm going to add, and now it adds this to the redundancy table. My job's not done yet though. It's very important that I hit send. So now when I hit send, it's going to send the redundancy information to the processor. And then when I hit save, it's going to save that to the processor itself. So now anything port one does, port two is going to automatically do the inversion for me. As a result, do note that if I try to now pr uh, work with port two, it's going to give me an error message saying sending card one port two is configured to be a backup device because it's already processed, it's already used. Um, so if in the future I want to process on port two, I would need to come back to sending card and then just delete the redundancies table. So once again, I'm going to hit add. I'm going to select my primary processor, backup processor, primary port, backup port. I'll make it three just to say I did. Hit add and now hit send. You must hit send for this to work. At that point, uh, your backup line is done. Always test it before you walk away. Uh, and at that point, you should be, should be good to go. Hope you enjoy the tip. Uh, as always, like, subscribe, uh, all that good stuff. Cheers.